just about presentations. It's about having some fun. We're going to be talking with Scott Evans, one of the principals at Clean Air Engineering, who does flare combustion efficiency testing. He's going to show us the mobile flare provided by Zico, the Clean Air Engineering trailer, and how FTIR works. Let's take a look. I'm here with Scott Evans from Clean Air Engineering at the 4C Environmental Conference opening reception. Today we have a live flare demonstration to show us how to perform a flare combustion efficiency test. As you can see behind us, we have a Zico mobile flare. So Scott, tell us a little bit about the process of how to do this. All right, well it all obviously starts with the flare, which just went out. Uh, <laughs> um, it's possible with uh, assisted flares, uh, especially steam assisted flares, to apply too much steam to the flare uh, and start to affect combustion efficiency. So the purpose of the test is to measure the combustion efficiency uh, so that you know how to adjust the steam to avoid those oversteaming conditions. Okay, great. So now let's take a look at the instrumentation involved in this. Okay, Scott, so tell us what type of instrumentation are we looking at here? All right, this is what's called a passive uh, uh, FTIR. Mm -hmm for Fourier transform infrared. And essentially what it's doing uh, is it's a, it's a passive instrument. It's basically an FTIR with a telescope on the bottom of it. And the telescope is focused on the flare tip way over there. And it is looking at the radiant spectrum coming off of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, tel of the flare. Uh, that data is analyzed in the FTIR uh, by the computers that are in the uh, trailer behind us. And from that analysis, we can tell exactly what's in the flare plume, how much methane, how much carbon dioxide, how much propylene, whatever happens to be in there. Okay, well why don't we take a look inside the trailer and see what's going on in there. All right, Scott, so we're inside the trailer that you use to collect all the data. So kind of walk us through what happens once we exit the FTR and it runs through the wires into here. Absolutely. Well, first of all, we have a lot of video that we take uh, to make sure that we're monitoring all aspects of the uh, of the flare during the testing. And you can see some of the video coming through here. We have two infrared cameras and one visible light uh, camera. Uh, and so uh, we're monitoring all of that while the, uh, the test is going on. The uh, FTIR data, however, comes into this computer monitor over here. And you can see that this is an example of uh, uh, the spectrum that we're actually analyzing. Uh, and uh, Bob Spellacy, who's talking to someone else right now, is the uh, uh, inventor of this technology. He's the spectroscopist that developed all the methodology and knows kind of what's going on here with that. Well, why don't we talk with Bob a little bit about what spectroscopy even is? I'm here with Bob Spellacy. He is the inventor of the iMac instrument that we looked at outside. And so, Bob, you're a spectroscopist, are you not? Yes. All right, so can you tell us what spectroscopy even is? Fundamentally, you're, uh, what you mean by a spectrum is the same thing you mean when you take a prism with sun and you, you get a spectrum on the wall, right? So you're, you're taking the sunlight and you're splitting it up into all of its constituent colors. That's, and that's what a rainbow is, too. So. Okay, so how does this apply to the flare? Can you explain what type of data we're looking at and we're analyzing? What, what we're doing with the flare is we're doing the same thing that, say, your prism does the sun, mm -hmm. but we're doing it in the infrared. And in the infrared, the gases above the flame, after the combustion is complete, are still hot enough that they emit infrared, and we can collect that infrared and analyze it for, spread it out into all of its colors, and in all these different color regimes, each molecule will have its own distinctive absorption pattern or emission pattern. So if you've been playing with this junk for enough years, you'll say, ah, there's CO, there's CO2. That, so you can actually determine what compounds are present, how much of each of them is present, and then you can compute from that what was the efficiency of the combustion. You know, did it really do a good job of destroying everything, or is there a lot of junk left over? So how are we doing today? Are we are uh, combusting efficiently? almost impossible not to do that with this fuel. <laughs> Today we're using propane, so we're not putting anything harmful into the air. Well, thank you for talking with us, Bob. We appreciate it. As you can see, 4C is more than just about a conference and learning. It's about experiencing. I hope you had a good time learning about flare combustion efficiency.